Welcome to Digging Deeper. We're glad that you're here with us. And I'm so glad that I have this opportunity of sharing the Word of God with two of my distinguished colleagues. I want to welcome Pastor Johnson. I want to welcome Pastor Denzi. It's so good for us to be here. How are you guys doing this today? By the grace of the Lord, I'm doing well and looking forward to this topic that really opens eyes. Amen. Amen. Very I'm glad to be Pastor here. Johnson. Yes, an honor. Pastor Denzi, would you pray for us, please? Sure. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you for the Holy Scriptures that are able to make us wise unto salvation. We ask for the blessing of your Holy Spirit that we may speak your words and your truth. We ask you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Well, you know, we are going to look at one of the fundamental beliefs that, that we have as Adventists. And we are going to dig deeper into the Word of God. We're going to be dealing with the great controversy and what this controversy involves and what it entails. I want us to begin by just sharing with you uh, the fundamental belief that is laid out in the, uh, by us in the church. It says, all humanity is now involved in a great controversy between Christ and Satan regarding the character of God, his law, and his sovereignty over the universe. This conflict originated in heaven when a created being endowed with freedom of choice in self-exaltation became Satan, God's adversary, and led into rebellion a portion of the angels. He introduced the spirit of rebellion into this world when he led Adam and Eve into sin. This human sin resulted in the distortion of the image of God in humanity. This disoriented of the created world and is eventually devastation at the time of the global, global flood, as presented in the historical account of Genesis 1 through 11. Observed by the whole creation, this world became the arena of the universal conflict out of which God, out of which the God of love will ultimately be vindicated. To, assi to assist his people in this controversy, Christ sends the Holy Spirit and the loyal angels to guide, protect, and sustain them in the way of salvation. We see we're dealing with this cosmic conflict, something that began before we were even born. We're dealing with a war that broke out in heaven. We're dealing with uh, a universe that was without sin, but then sin entered this world. This is a controversy that takes us back to the beginning of time. Now. In a perfect world where no sin was, yet sin originated. Now, we're dealing with the character of God. We're dealing with his law and his sovereignty over the universe. The Bible says that this great controversy existed between Christ and <coughs> Satan. This is one of our fundamental beliefs. Most Christians will acknowledge that this kind of controversy continues to rage throughout the, urge, throughout the years, even down to now. This controversy began in heaven, as I said, and it is transferred down to this earth. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 9, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angel fought with a dragon, and the dragon and his angel fought, but they did not prevail, nor was their place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels was cast out with him. Uh, the, the, this Lucifer that was created perfect, was cast out of heaven because war broke out. Now, now the question that comes to mind is what caused the fall? What caused the war? I, I, Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 14, the Bible says, 
How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground? You who weaken the nations, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into the heavens. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of, of congregation on the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Now, now here we see this created being want to take a position that's not his. Mm. A position that, be got, that, that belong to the creator. He is saying that I want to be like God. In mm. other words, mm. I want to ascend. I want to take your throne, God. Mm. I want to dethrone you and I want to take your place. Mm. That was not his place. Mm. So, uh, you know, my, my mama will say you can't have two chiefs. Mm. There can only be one. So as a result, war broke out in heaven, and Lucifer, this perfectly created being, was cast out. And how do I know that he was perfectly created? The Bible declares in Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 12 through 18, Son of man, take up a lament for the king of Tyre and said to him, Thus said the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection. Talking about Lucifer, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Very precious stones were your covering, the sardis, the topaz, the diamonds. So Lucifer in heaven was, before the fall, was this perfect created being. Beautiful, the Bible says. He had pipes coming out of his, of his being. Now, now I imagine that, I, take, I talk about those pipes because I love to sing, I love music. And I think Lucifer was the only one that can sing all parts together. Now, we can't do that as human beings. We can only sing one part, but he could sing alto, soprano, tenor, baritone, bass, all at the same time. What a perfect created being he was. But he was not satisfied with that. What Lucifer wanted to be, he wanted to be like God. The fundamental issue that we see in, in, in this great controversy is the attack on the love of God. Lucifer's accusation was that God, this God of love, this God whose nature is love, uh, is not a God of love. He's a God that is a tyrant, so to speak. But Lucifer wanted to show that God was not a God of love. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 33 says, God is love. His nature, his law is love. It has ever been and ever will be. Every manifestation of his creative power is an expression of infinite love. And in Great Controversies, page 678, she says, the great controversy is ended. Sin and sinners are no more. The entire universe is clean. My brothers and sisters, my friends, what I'm saying to you today is that the controversy, this war that is even on this earth will one day be over. Mm. Mm. Sin yes. will be done away with. Yes. And Jesus Christ, this God of love, will reign supreme. We are dealing right now on this earth with this controversy between good and evil. It's raging in our homes. It's raging in our lives. And the main point that the devil wants to, 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 to do for us is for us to give up on the love of God. Mm. You know, when we face difficulties and we face hard times and we face trouble, the first thing comes to mind is, you know what? Let me just back out. Let me just take a back seat. Let me just move out of the protective, loving arms of Jesus Christ. And my friends, that's where we need to stay when we, fear, when we are faced with difficulties. Selfishness is at the heart of Lucifer's deception. Mm. Lucifer, because of his selfishness, he decided that he wanted to be like God. That's how selfishness came into being. Mm. And it's something that we all deal with. Uh, one of the greatest sins that we're dealing with is the sin of selfishness. All of us want to be somebody that we're not. Come on, preacher.
instead of completely surrendering to Jesus and staying under the protective arm of Jesus. So this battle, it is between God's agape love and Satan's selfish love. God agape style of love, which is a selfless love. Agape style of love means that God is going to love you no matter what you do. Amen. But his love <clears throat> is not forever. Mm. We take God's love for granted, my brothers and sisters, but this is what we're dealing with. God is love. His love is unselfish. It's not self-seeking. Lucifer, his love, he doesn't have any. If I was to say he had some, it would have been a selfish kind of love because that's what this, all, this is all about. So this is, what, this is how discord now came into the world because of selfish love, because of the selfish love of Lucifer. Now, gentlemen, so help me out here. I was having this discussion with someone, and, and they raised the question, how is it that in a perfect world where there was no sin, how is it that sin entered? That's the first thing I want to ask you. How is it that this thing, sin, came into this perfect world? That is a very good question. I, I think we need to call that a mystery. Uh, I'd like to look again here in Ezekiel 28, because I have taken a look at this, and it's very interesting to me, because it says, Ezekiel 28, 15, you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. And looking at the part that says was found in you, it appears when you compare perfect in all your ways, mm. in other words, when he was created, he was perfect. Perfect, perfect, from day one to however long he existed, he was perfect. And then there's a moment in time that iniquity is found in him, in other words, um, he was perfect. Mm -hmm. And you could examine him from head to toe, uh, every extremity, perfect, 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 until this moment in time that iniquity surfaces. And that word was found. It's a Hebrew word, matzah, which people will forget in about five seconds. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it means that it, it, something appears that was not there before. And so this was something of his own doing because... Uh, he made a choice, and that's something that we are all given, freedom of choice. He made a choice, and looking further down in the verse here, in verse 17, it says, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. Mm -hmm. So a choice is made. Mm -hmm. You corrupted your wisdom. It was his choice. Mm -hmm. It was not there. For the sake of your splendor. Now, I would like to share with you something interesting to me, mm -hmm. and I make a comparison of this. Uh, Moses, when he was in the mount, he was uh, in that glory. He was receiving that glory for 40 days. What happens with Moses after he goes back to the camp? <laughs> the people looked at him and he's shining. He's shining. They said, Moses, cover your face. So he covers his face because he was in the presence of God. Lucifer was in the presence of God. Mm. The glory that he had, that God had given him, mm. plus the glory he received from the Father, he seemed to shine more than the others. So some of this affected his mind, and uh, mysteriously, we can't really explain it because he was perfect in a perfect environment, like you mentioned. Everything was provided for him. There was no lack, but he wants something that God has. Yeah. And that's where the selfishness that you, you mentioned surfaced in him. Uh, he was the inventor of it, if we can use that phrase. And it's a very, it's a mystery. It, it's, there's no explanation for it in yeah. reality. Fred, I'd like to add on to that. First, I love that idea. <laughs> he forgot where the shine was coming from. <laughs> That's, That's right. beautiful. That's right. um, I, I was thinking too, we have another example oh. of someone falling who had been made perfect and in a perfect environment. Um, I'd like to know what you all think of this. So here we are in Genesis chapter 3. Um, of course, this is where the serpent um, mm. beguiles uh, Eve and, mm. then, and then Adam. It says in verse 4, here's Satan talking to Eve. He says, it says, And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Verse 5, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, 
then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil. So it's, it's not absolutely perfect, but we have a similar uh, situation here. Here is someone that is already made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. Here is someone that is already supremely beautiful. Here is someone that has been given everything that she needs mm -hmm. in order to be happy, to survive, and the surviving of her children. And I believe Satan employs the very same tactic that he self-employed in the beginning. Wow. Um, first, the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Doubting God's word, right there. Doubt the word of God. Now, this is just me talking, mm -hmm. but I feel that when that, that point at which iniquity was found in him, he was doubting God's word. Mm -hmm. He was doubting God's promise that you, Lucifer, are perfect the way I have made you and will reach your full fulfillment throughout eternity, being what I intended for you to be. Mm -hmm. And then he puts that on Eve right there. And then where it says, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods. Mm -hmm. And then he offers Eve a station that God never intended for her to have. Yes, uh, I just feel as though he is employing the very same yes, strategy yes. on Eve. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, is the root of iniquity doubting the word of God? I don't know, what do you think? Well, the, the, the word iniquity in, in the Hebrew, it means bent, mm -hmm. uh, having a, a, to be crooked. Mm. So I believe that Lucifer's bent, that iniquity was bent to self. Self. Mm -hmm. And, and it is bent that doubt God's love mm. for, for us, for mankind. And it's the same thing that he did with Eve. And it's the same thing he does with us. It's the same. There's the, the MO is the same. Mm. You know, so he had a bent towards self, which is opposite from God's bent to love. Mm -hmm. God has, his, his God is about love. So let's talk a little bit about God's love. Mm. What uh, is God's lo agape love about? Uh, you know, I guess even God himself uses this comparison. Mm. Um, shall a woman forget her suckling child mm. that she should not have uh, compassion on him? So he compares his love in some degree to the mother's love. Mm. So when we look at a mother, I, it's interesting. Uh, I saw this, I was watching this documentary about these elephants and these elephants had a dry season mm. and they had their places to go to get water. And they came upon a point where the place where they get water was also dry. Mm. And the elephants were putting their, their trunk into this hole to get water and I, it was visible to the, he pulls out his trunk and goes, mm. and it was just dust, mm. no water. So they have to run, for, they, have to walk, they have to go, they have to go. So they're moving and the documentary shows these elephants. And one by one, they were going, but there was one, a baby that fell and could not go anymore. And he was there just dying. Mm. And the elephants were all around this baby as if, you know, uh, having compassion. But they realized if we all stay, we're all gonna die. Yes. So one by one, they walked away and there was one left. And the commentator said, we don't know if this is the mother, mm. but more than likely it is the mother mm. having their last moment mm. with her baby. Mm. And this is God's love. He will not give up on us. It's a pure love that we cannot really explain. Yeah. But this, was, this captured my attention. Mm. And uh, God's love is so pure that he loves us unlike anything else, that, unlike anyone else could, unlike anyone else could. And that's, that's the same love that sustained Lucifer. Yes. <laughs> now this is interesting. I'm sorry, I don't want to take up too much time, no, but preaches, yeah. the Lucifer loved God. We have to say he loved God. So now he's having an internal battle. Mm. I want what he's got. So he has to battle, but I love God. How can I do this? And he had an internal struggle, but the selfishness overpowered. This is a mystery. This is a poison. What, yeah. Wasn't he yeah. in the presence of God? Yeah. Yes. It was an anointed term. I yes. mean, just imagine 
the, the, the perspective of God he had. And I'm thinking about the struggle yes. that you just talked about. That, that's deep, that's deep. He, he saw God's love and he loved God and yet. Yet, hmm. and that's, that's why sin is so deceptive mm -hmm. that even those you love, you will hurt because of self. self. But shouldn't the love of God as the Bible says, the love of God constrains us. Yes. Mm. Shouldn't that love, if we understand God's agape love, mm -hmm. and we are truly understand the gospel of Jesus Christ, it should constrain us, yes. even from making some bad decisions. It is a story that I love, and I tell the story all the time. I heard the story, it talks about this, this father and this daughter. And they, the father, they would, he, when the daughter was younger, they would be together most of the time. The daughter got older and she went into a life of prostitution. She went into a life of drugs. But the father would write her every day a letter asking her to come back home. And that father's love never stopped. Mm -hmm. Amen. Until one day she, she got all these letters and she decided that, you know, she's going to go back home. And she was wondering, will my father take me back? Will he accept me? Mm -hmm. And one of the letters that she didn't see, she stood outside the house and something impressed her mind to open that letter. And she opened the letter and the father was saying to her, look, I know what you've done. I know the life you live, but nothing you will ever do will make me love you less. <laughs> Praise God. And when I think of that, I think of God's love. And that is a love that should constrain us from following our selfish desires, because once we follow our selfish desires, we're following the desires that we inherited mm. from Lucifer. And so this battle, this great controversy that we're dealing with, is it's a spiritual battle yes. for us. Yes. You know, we're, we're at war, aren't we? Yes, we That's are. That's right. Spiritual war. How are we to overcome this? How are we to overcome this battle within ourselves? <laughs> Um, that battle, that battle also comes to each and every one of us, mm. that controversy in our mind, do I want to follow God mm. or do I want to follow those things that I love? And when we realize that sin hurts us, does us damage and does damage to those we love, it's when we can begin to understand that God has a better way. Yes. God has a better way for us. And when we realize that, like you said, I will love you no matter mm. what you do, mm. I think we can begin to, 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 to decide I need God's love in my life. I think that's when we can begin to do that. Yeah. It's an interesting, interesting concept. Pastor, what do, you, what do you think? Your question, how do we overcome? Yeah. Um, I would like to read Revelation chapter 12. Mm. I'm gonna read verses 10 and 11. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren mm -hmm. is cast down which accuseth them before our God day and night, this controversy. But then it says in verse 11, and they overcame him mm -hmm. by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Um, I don't, I know. I'll speak for myself. I can't beat the devil. I cannot. But through the blood of the lamb, yeah. through the power of Jesus Christ. And we have to, and this is, a, this is a learning process for us. We have to learn to let God fight that. Yeah. You know, our effort is in trusting God and trusting in his word. And he overcomes. He overcomes. Amen. That's we overcome. Amen. But I think the text says something I think is very important for us to unpack. Yes, sir. They overcame by the what? By the blood, the of, blood the of the lamb. The blood of the lamb. Amen. What Jesus did. That's Jesus's Amen. part. Mm. And what else? The testimony. The testimony. Yes. yes. So, so what is that testimony? Explain to our audience, what is that testimony about? Uh, the word of their testimony, as uh -huh. it says there in, in Revelation chapter 12, is the testimony that we have been saved Hallelujah. by grace through faith Hallelujah. because there is no other way. Mm. There is no other way. The precious blood of Jesus, yes. the grace yes. that extends to every single individual. That's so, the testimony. So as Christians, now the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, 
mm. but against principality, yes. against powers, against spiritual weakness. So we are going to constantly wrestle with this, but we can overcome by our testimony, practical. I, I believe that we should be sharing yes. our testimony. Amen. Sharing what Jesus has done for us, what we used to be yes. and what we are now. Come on now. By Jesus Christ. By Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. I think the more we share that is the more we'll get victory. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Praise the yeah. Lord. Yes. We can, that's, that's, that's the only solution to this. We'll Amen. get victory as we share Jesus Christ. How will this battle end? Ah, talk to me about it. How will this thing end? <laughs> We've got a few minutes. <laughs> you know, Christ wins. Mm. <laughs> there, there, yes. It's simplified. Christ wins. But if I may, I very quickly, it says in Revelation chapter 21, Come on now. Um, when I saw a new heaven and a new yeah. earth, John, I'm going to jump to four. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There'll be no more death, no sorrow, crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. Somehow, the victory of Jesus is such that sin will never rise again. Amen. Amen. Which Amen. I believe helps us understand the nature of what God is doing mm -hmm. through this controversy. He is and has on the cross showing us in such a way that never again will the ideology of Satan rise. So it will end with utter finality in such a way that sin never rises. Amen. 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 Any little closing thoughts, Pastor? Uh, you know, you, you were talk, we were talking about God's love and comparing to a woman. Here's what he says in Isaiah 49, 16. Behold, I have graven you upon the palms of my Mercy. hands. Mercy. See, a woman may forget her child, but God says, I have you on the mm -hmm. palms of my hands. Mm -hmm. I have you on there. Mm -hmm. yeah. As we look at this important topic, we know that this is going to come to an end. We know that the devil have already lost. That's right. Because of Jesus' death on the Amen. cross, because of Jesus' victory. But during this great controversy, we must choose a side. We have to choose That's right. whether Christ or Satan. And the choice that we make, it will determine where we will spend eternity. And may God give us wisdom. And may God help us to make the right choice. May God help you that's watching this program today to make the right choice. I encourage you to choose Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It will be the best choice that you can make because the only victory that we can get is the victory that Jesus has already given to us. So may God continue to bless you. May God hold you in the palm of his hands. Amen. Amen.